Hello and welcome to Temasoft Antenna Editor, our new tool for creating custom Wi-Fi antenna patterns. Uh, when you model your future Wi-Fi network using Temagraph Site Survey, our RF planning tool, you can select a specific access point type. Temagraph comes with a large library of access points by major vendors, but it's possible that this specific model has not been added to our library yet. That's exactly when you need Temasoft Antenna Editor. It allows you to add a new antenna on your own, assuming that you have its horizontal and vertical radiation patterns. So, let's begin with creating a new project and move step by step. As I mentioned, a prerequisite for a successful antenna modeling is the antenna data, which you can usually find on the vendor's uh, website. In our case, we'll model the Extreme Network's uh, 3915i access point antenna for the 2.4 GHz band. First, uh, we are going to fill out basic antenna info that we've found in the documentation. That's the vendor name, model name, frequency, and uh, antenna gain. As you can see, the comment field has been filled out automatically, but you can replace the default comment. Now we are going to model the horizontal radiation pattern. Uh, we should select the background first. As the source image, we can use any bitmap format or a PDF file, as we are currently doing. Right now, there is too much data that we don't need on this page, so I'm selecting the part that we really want and using the crop tool. All that is left to do is rotating the background so that the zeroth degree points to the east. I'm using the rotate clockwise by 90 degrees tool to achieve this. The next step is calibrating the background. I need to enter the maximum and minimum values, as well as the grid step. Then, using the mouse, I need to align the center and set the diameter of the calibration grid with a grid drawn on the background. For finer alignment, I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard. We're done with the calibration and we can proceed to the crucial part of the job, drawing the RF diagram. Our task is to trace the diagram as accurately as possible. Uh, there are a few alternative methods of tackling this task. Uh, the first option is to use a mouse to trace the curve. But uh, I'm going to use a better option, which is using automatic image recognition technology. This method works pretty well as long as you have a higher resolution source image. It's also a great time saver. If automatic diagram curve detection doesn't produce acceptable results, you can always resort to the first option and complete the drawing manually. In our case, automatic detection has been uh, successful and we can proceed to modeling the vertical pattern. I would also like to mention that the tool offers a high precision mode in which you can manually define each of the uh, 360 values, but that kind of precision is almost never required. Okay, I'm now performing the uh, same operations as the ones I've performed for the horizontal pattern. I'm selecting and calibrating the background grid now. In order to avoid the second calibration, I'm using the synchronize function. The calibration has been completed and I'm proceeding to draw the diagram curve, just as I did with the horizontal pattern. Again, I'm using automatic detection. I'd like to draw your attention to these elements on the diagram. Those are alignment marks. 
In other words, the points where the horizontal and vertical radiation patterns converge. If I uh, hover the mouse pointer over these marks, I can see a hint. If the hint color is light green, then I've achieved a good convergence. The color is red otherwise. Sometimes it's not easy to achieve good convergence due to the quality of the pattern images. I'm going to experiment a little by rotating the diagram to find the best convergence. Uh, this UI element allows you to set the acceptable convergence limits. So, our model is ready and you can view it in 3D on the wizard's final page. We can now save the project and generate the antenna file that has the .msi extension. To add the resulting antenna to the Tamagraph library, you just need to copy the msi file to the appropriate folder. The folder location depends on whether you are running macOS or Windows. You can see the folder names on the screen right now. Once you've copied the file and restarted Tamagraph, the new antenna becomes available in Tamagraph. Thanks for watching and be sure to visit us and download our software at tamas.com.